Hey everybody, it's Woomay Creations here. Uh, look at your shirt. I thought it was uh, a loose thread, but she's got her whole needle my, and everything yeah, in there. Whatever. Okay. okay, so today we are making this little i well, it's not necessarily an iPhone, it's a mobile device stand. And I am going to zoom in here and let you guys take a screenshot or whatever. You can always roll this video back and see what is going on here. But this is everything you're going to need to make this project. And so, G, turn the project a little bit. Show what you oh, can do. Oh, okay. So. Well, wait, that you can put the phone sideways. Oh, you can put the phone sideways also. And it also will hold an iPad too, like this. Um and then I actually added my label. If you have a label, I'll show you how show to do that. Um, Say created by G. I'll show you how to where to install that. But um, wait, let me see the top of that. It looks weird. Oh, that I was. That's I was, where I hand sewed it. It's not bad. No, but it those black this. things are part of the pattern. Yes, so on film it looks kind of silly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But, okay. It's fine. All right. Whatever. Okay. So listen, all you're going to need is a nine by 12 piece of fabric. Um, and then you fold it in half. So now it's six by nine. And then you're going to take a marking pen. And if you're right here at your table, you can just use the markings on your table. Come in about an inch, mark it an inch and a half because you're going to leave this open. You're not going to sew in between it. And then for quickness, I just take my one by six ruler and I mark it here. This is where I'm gonna put my label. If you're not doing a label, you don't have to do this mark right here. And I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew from here to here. And then again, and I'm gonna leave this open. And then again, from here, all the way down to here. Unless and, you're doing your label. Well, yeah, I'm gonna show them where I stick my label in. But, no, but they're going to sew past that point? Yeah. Well, I'm no going to show them at my machine. Just watch. Well, but you probably should say it without, because not everybody has labels. Well, then they won't stick it in there. It's okay. simple. But Just come with me to the machine. Good right. Lord. Okay, so now we're going to show you so, how to sew it up. So this is how I had it laying over there. I'm going to start by putting it in here. And I'm going to just drop down to a couple back stitches to start off with. And I'm going to sew to my first mark. And I'm going to back stitch it and back stitch it and back stitch it. Because when we stuff, we don't want to break the stitches. So I'm going to cut it off. And then I'll start back at this next mark. So I'll drop that down, do some back stitching, back stitching, back stitching, and then go to the end here, quarter inch. I should have had this on so it could raise when I stopped. That's the wonderful thing about this machine. Now, remember I told you, if you have a label to you that you want to add, you have the mark there, you're gonna just insert your label right here where your mark is Make right sure above it's upside down above the mark it right. doesn't matter unless well it doesn't matter it's going to stick out the same way oh okay so and if you don't have a label then you're just going to just continue to quarter inch sew this right down through here and i just do a little back stitch right there and then we'll go to the iron and show you what to do next okay g you're back okay so i just um snip off these uh, threads that I had. And, and if y'all don't have, wait, let me show them the scissors. If y'all don't have these Martelli scissors, oh my God, they're, they're, they're so good. Look at the so, point on them. They're so sharp. So right now I'm gonna just take and remove the corners off of my project, just making sure that I don't get into my stitches here of, of the corners. This reduces the bulk. And um, when you turn out your piece, it will, it will be neater. Now, here's what I found to be helpful in ironing these seams open, because it's hard to iron open when you've got this kind of a shape. So what I started doing was turning it over like this, finger press it a little bit like that, and then take my iron and iron that open, okay? Then 
I'm going to do the same to this seam up here. I'm going to iron it open. And remember, we had that space that we left. That's so we can stuff it. And then eventually we will have to hand sew that back together. And so I'm just ironing it open like that. Now, the next thing you wanna do is stick your hand in here and get it like that. Now you're gonna, you, you have this crease on the other side to know where the halfway point is. So I just line that up and then I flip it like this and just open this seam up a little bit more and I'm gonna just run up. I'm trying not to get in Sherry's way here, but I like to run my seam up like that. Run my iron up my seam. Now, I take this part that's sticking up here and flip it down. And you know when it's in the middle because it's gonna be in the middle of this part here too, okay? So, You've already ironed this somewhat open earlier. It's a little bit fiddly, but not a lot. There she goes, y'all, with that fiddly work. So I'm just gonna steam this part, um, and it just makes all those seams stay open. Okay, now. But you got up there a dog ear thing that you can cut off? No, you just don't even have to be bothered by it. Huh. So, um, Anyway, then you get it like this. Now, the next step you're gonna do is go to your uh, table where you're, I, I left all my measuring tools up here. So what I'm gonna do is mark this with an inch and a half here to here. I'm using the lines on my board, here to here. You're gonna leave that open and you're gonna sew all this and this and we'll be back. Okay, G. Okay, same way here. We're just gonna back stitch it just a little bit. We're gonna get to our first mark and really back stitch it because we don't wanna rip our stitches when we're stuffing. Gonna cut that. We're gonna go down to our next mark and then back stitch it, back stitch it, back stitch it. Aren't you glad I'm not saying back anymore? I was just anymore? about to say that. I knew it. You done broke yourself of that. Yeah, because you made fun of me too much. Peer pressure. So anyway, now you've got this sewn with that mark, that inch and a half opening. Now is the, probably the most fiddly part of it is to, now you're gonna, oh wait, first cut these cut corners. corners. Also, you can use your pink snippets for that too. Those are awesome too. Uh-huh. So you're just reducing the bulk of their corners. So now we're gonna just turn this whole thing inside out. Um, there are tools that helps you do that, but if you just get it started um, and just gently push, you'll get it to come through. I don't know if you wanna keep the film rolling the whole time I'm trying to stuff this through here, but you can watch if you want. What do you think? Well, I'm thinking, why wouldn't you leave a bigger space? Why are you going to make it all hard Because, on you know, everybody oh, hates the hand gotta, sew. Okay. This is, the way you're doing this, it's one piece of fabric, and you're you are got an inch and a half to hand sew in two areas, and that's it. So, it's not that bad. So, now we're going to get this the whole way turned through here, which, obviously, it takes longer to do this part than it does sew the whole daggone thing. Um, if you got big fingers, you might want to use one of those tools that help you pull or things through. Or just use a knitting needle like well, we do. This was our this mommy's is, knitting needle. And this is my mommy needle, and I put it through the hole and just make sure that I'm straightening out where these are. And that opening is just going to like kind of shut itself. We're going to go over an iron and now we're gonna stick it in this hole up here and get our triangular part pushed out. So, it's all making sense now, right? Of course it is. <laughs> okay, so there. 
So, and you know where the back is because the seam is there, see there? So we're gonna flip this around and we're gonna go to the iron and I'm gonna iron this to where, because the next thing I'm gonna need to do is mark this. So we'll be at the iron and then at the marking table or I'll bring my stuff over to the iron. The back, we're just gonna lay it on our ironing surface. Oh, by the way, what is this called, Sherry? The wool wool mat. mat, just the wool mat. Um, I like, because it produces a lot of heat and you don't have to press for that long. So, now I wanna mark this three inches from the bottom. So I'm using my, I told you, I like to do things quickly and I don't have to think. I'm just gonna set my La Cresta ruler here. I'm gonna mark it all the way across. Cause it's three inches wide. Yes, it's a three inch by eight inches and nine, uh, nine inches, sorry. And so I've got my line here and that is what is gonna tell me where to stick my Pellon, um piece that was uh, explained in the supplies. So now we're gonna stick this through. Well, you can tell them what it is here. I'll get that it's other It's the Pellon Peltex 70 Ultra Firm Stir Stabilizer. There. Uh, she wrote on one of them to remind herself. So well, anyway, it's in the, it's in the description. very first picture. So then you're gonna stuff this through the hole. Wow, I didn't leave myself very good uh, there. I went over a little bit on my stitches, uh, evidently. But anyway, just work this to where you can get this sitting inside of your project. Okay. Get it stuck in there. Now, the object is to just maneuver it to where you can put this Peltex piece right underneath right underneath that line exactly you learn sherry Ugh. you were paying attention actually i'm surprised anyway i ain't even gonna argue with you right now i'm too tired yeah and you might get me coughing <laughs> so okay so there it is there it is now i've got that in there and now just for ease of use, again, I'm gonna take my La Cresta ruler and put it on here, just at the edge of, of that Pellon piece, and I'm gonna mark my other sew line. And now all we have to do is go and sew a straight line on my marked lines, and that will keep this piece nice and sturdy in there. So that's, that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so now we're back at the machine and She's gonna just sew a line. Yeah, I'm just right gonna back stitch it a little bit and just sew on the line if I can get to the line. Oh my gosh. What? Not sewing on the line very good. I can't hardly see. I don't feel good. Okay. And now. Yeah, real okay. life sewing, y'all. Oh my gosh. Yeah, real life sewing, y'all. This is awful. You're not okay. going to be able to see that when you stuff that thing. No. Get over it. All right. She I always will. wants to be perfect. Well, I mean, seriously. This part all, don't have to be perfect. All I had to do is sew on a line and couldn't do it, but I'm lucky to even be breathing right now without coughing. Okay, so there we go. Those two things are sewn poorly, but they're done. Okay, now... We're gonna go back over to our other station to work and we're gonna add one cup of rice. Do we need to race those lines? Um, yeah, well, I'll do it at the end. You just squirt it with water and then they'll disappear. Actually, I'll show that on camera too. It's a Mark Be Gone pen, but um, why are you? So we're gonna just squirt these lines. So what I've learned when you use these Mark Be Gone pens is that you need to really saturate it in order for the lines to disappear. Because one time I was freaking out, and it's just because I didn't saturate it good enough. So, there actually, I saturated it a whole bunch, um, just for demonstration purposes. But anyway, so now the lines are gone. 
Now, what you're gonna do is take a funnel. Now, I find if you get a, the hole kind of big, it's a lot, it goes in a lot faster. You're gonna stick. And we got a three pack at the Dollar Tree. Yep. This is the big one in the three pack. Yep. So y'all can get one like it if you want. Yep, and just stick that in there and hold it to where it's airy. Nothing's, and take one cup of rice and put it in there. If you hold it up, it'll go in there pretty fast. Okay, so that's only one cup of rice. So now you say, what is the deal with the rest of all that in there? All that room that's in there. Um, well, that's where She's your- She's about to answer it. <laughs> uh, that's where your polyfill comes in. Um, you, so you're just gonna take your polyfill and stuff it in that hole and yes, I know it's not a very big hole, but you can work it, I promise. You can see me doing it. Um, you know, the bigger hole you leave, the more, the, you, gotta sew. The more you gotta sew back together. So um, I found that I would rather spend a little bit more time trying to get my stuffing in things rather than have a, a bigger area to have to hand sew. So you're just gonna keep stuffing this and just make sure that you're going all the way over to your corners with your stuffing. That way your corners are formed. Obviously there's more air in here, so we gotta put some more. And the reason why I can't tell you how much is because I just grab handfuls and just start stuffing. Um, so, however many handfuls you see me grab, that's how many you need. <laughs> well, it depends <laughs> a, on how it's much It's not a perfect grab. science here. Right, so. And it depends on how firm or whatever they want it. They might want a mushy one. <laughs> I <laughs> well, don't know why, but. Okay, so you see that the rice will make it stand up good. And then the polyfill makes it nice and poofy. So it's heavy enough, but not too heavy. I made one completely with rice and it was a little bit too heavy. So, but if that's what you like, then go for it. Then, um, after you get that stuffed, of course, you're going to have to hand sew that together. And we're going to show that next, or what? Yeah. I, oh, I do this first. Yeah. I want to stuff this little part down here. Um, you just got to stick your finger in there and just start working it. Um, probably can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just trying to get it started through this hole here. And just start stuffing it in there. 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 Now you turned it around. Doofy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to call you Goofy and Doofus, so it's the, Doofy. Yeah. <laughs> I made a new word. Yeah, you're so cute. <laughs> My gosh. But look, how cute is this thing coming along? So, you want to stuff that as um, as full as you can. Yeah. That way, it's nice for your holder. Just make sure, like I said, that you're going all the way to your corners and getting your corners pushed out. Okay. And then um, I was showing how I hand sew these closed, but you can use whatever technique you like to do your hand sewing with. Um, but well, we can show them one part. Uh, Let's just uh, the part that we filmed uh, when I was sewing that other one together. We'll show them. I don't feel like doing it right now. I'm about to cough to death. Okay. So um, we'll show that on the next thing, and then you've got a completed project. Oh my! Thing my got tag ironed. got ironed the wrong way, but hey, that's what this iron's good for. See there? Yeah, there, you go. there you go. So, so. oh my gosh! Ay ay ay! Quit talking at the same time as me. Okay. Before we start fighting, we're done. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye. Okay, G, show them. Don't start already. Why don't well, you show I've, them? Well, I've, I've already gotten started, but they can hand sew it however they like to hand sew, but I like to do this ladder stitch where you are going right into that fold right across from where you're at and stick it in and come out. I just pinch up a little bit and pull it. And then you're gonna go right across from where you were 
and stick it in the fold there and pull it. And um, when you start, you'll start seeing it going across from each other. When you pull, it won't look like anything's been done there. So I'll just show it one more time. It's all on the inside. Yeah, so you go straight across from where you're at, do a little pinch. This is not my favorite part either, but it's only an inch and a half worth of hand sewing on the top and an inch and a half on the bottom part. So um, I just had to get over it and just do it. So you can too. So you get a few stitches like that, and when you pull it, it looks nice. Can't see it. Okay. So you're going to want to close both of the openings that you have, which there's one in the top, like, triangle piece here, and then the one down here at the bottom of the bottom part of your stand. So you'll have to sew both of those openings closed, and then we'll be back and show you the finished product. Okay, y'all. Gee, we're back. Okay. Okay, so, so this here's, is... here's the finished... Uh, Wait, hold it up. See how cute. Okay, you know what we should do? What we should keep? We should give that away at, at um at the retreat. We'll do a raffle. Let's bring okay. it to the retreat or okay, move, yeah. maybe some of these or well, I don't know. For sure, this one we did the video one. We'll we'll give this away at the retreat for our raffle. Yeah. <coughs> okay. And so y'all know when G makes one thing, she makes a hundred of them. So here's some more that she's done. Yeah. With different fabrics. So, and, and she's then, already sent one to her daughter and these kind of things. Um, she wanted to show how the So, I don't even hold the iPad up. So, so there you have, have it. it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Peace out.